One of the most important fundamentals of photography is understanding your triangle of exposure, your aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. Today, we're gonna to cover shutter speed in depth so that you have a better understanding of how to control the amount of blur that happens when you take a picture. If you're wanting to take pictures of flowing water and you want it to look really smooth like cotton candy, or if you're trying to take pictures of someone on a bicycle or driving a car and you want it to look like they're going really fast, having an understanding of shutter speed is gonna allow you to do that better. shutter speed is responsible for how much light comes into the camera. There are different types of mechanisms that allow your camera to do this, such as curtains that close or a leaf shutter mechanism inside the lens. But regardless of how that happens, it's responsible for how long light comes into the camera. Shutter speed is measured in fractions of a second. You will see it notated on digital cameras this way, and there's usually a thumb dial you can rotate to change this fraction or to change your shutter speed. With film cameras, the shutter speed is usually a dial on the top of the camera and it is notated in whole numbers. There are some digital cameras that emulate film cameras and they do have that dial on the top of the camera rather than a thumb dial that changes a fraction. That can be slightly confusing when you're trying to figure out whether or not you're changing your aperture, which is located on a ring on the outside of your lens with film cameras, or if it's the shutter speed. But the dial on the top of a film camera that has whole numbers is usually designated for the shutter speed. The triangle of exposure that I mentioned a moment ago, including aperture, ISO, and shutter speed, are responsible for making sure that your photo's exposure is balanced, meaning it's not too bright and it's not too dark. With shutter speed, you are not only making sure that you are dialing in your exposure, but you're making sure that you're not introducing too much blur to your image. With shutter speed, the longer you expose the camera to light or the slower your shutter speed, the more blur you're going to introduce to your images. Now, sometimes this is an artistic choice and it is on purpose, but sometimes it's not. If you're taking pictures of somebody and you want it to be a very crisp and in focus picture, and for some reason it's coming out blurry, it might be because your shutter speed is too slow. If you are shooting pictures any slower than 1 60th of a second, you should have your camera on a tripod because the chances that you're going to introduce motion blur to your images increase drastically when you shoot at slower speeds and you hold the camera. So if you're shooting at 1 30th of a second, that's fine, but make sure you have a tripod when you're doing that. I mentioned that shutter speed is part of the triangle of exposure. Since shutter speed is responsible for the amount of light coming into the camera, the faster your shutter speed, the less light you are going to let into the camera. And the slower your shutter speed, something like an eighth of a second, is going to let more light into your camera. If you want to leave your aperture set at a certain f-stop, something like f8 for example, being able to expose your images properly is going to be determined by whether or not you have your shutter speed set properly. If you leave your f-stop at eight and you are shooting at 1 30th of a second, you're gonna be letting in a lot of light. So if you're outside and it's a bright day, you might be letting too much light into your camera. You're going to have to speed up your shutter speed at 1 25th of a second to 50th of a second or faster to let less light into your camera. Another aspect worth noting about shutter speed is when you change the shutter speed on your camera, you have to pay attention to the aperture and the ISO because they are all correlated to one another. If you change your shutter speed and you leave your aperture and your ISO set, you're either going to have an overexposed picture or an underexposed picture, hence the triangle of exposure and how they're all correlated. Now you can set your camera to shutter priority. There's a dial on the top of digital cameras that has an M, S, A, P, and the S is the shutter priority. 
shutter priority allows you to only change the shutter speed on your camera and your camera will automatically change the aperture and the ISO for you. Once you get that under your belt, it's easier to go back and figure out how the others correlate with shutter speed. So if you have a digital camera that you can set to shutter priority, and get those reps under your belt, it's a good idea for you to go ahead and practice doing that. If you're wanting to shoot night skies and have long exposures, it's going to be difficult for you to do that if you don't understand how long you need to have your shutter open in order to capture all of that light and to capture that light crisp without any blur. For night photography, you're going to need to open your aperture as wide as it will go, so the smallest f-stop that your lens will allow, or open as wide as it will go, and your shutter speed is going to have to be set for really long exposure. You can achieve this by adjusting the thumb dial on your digital camera for your shutter speed until it reaches a whole number. When this happens, you are no longer in fractions of a second, but you're now in whole seconds. So if you see eight, for example, your camera is now going to be exposed to eight seconds of light before it closes that shutter. And the longer you leave your shutter open for night photography, the more light you let in and the more information you're going to pick up. With something like waterfalls or running rivers, it doesn't have to be as long, but the longer you leave your shutter open, the more blur you're going to introduce, the more whimsical it's going to look. So if you're taking a picture of a river and you want the water to look really blurry, you can set your camera's shutter speed to something like an eighth of a second and you should be able to achieve this. The slower you set your shutter speed though, the more blur you're going to have in that water. Again, these images do need to be captured on a tripod because they're going to be slower than a 30th of a second. At 1 60th of a second, you're usually going to have motion blur introduced. There is an exception to this though. Where you stand when you take a picture of your subject changes the type of motion blur in your image. If someone passes directly parallel in front of the lens, it's going to introduce a lot more motion blur than it will if they pass you coming perpendicular to your lens. Here are a few pictures of one of my friends riding a bike past me, and the shutter speed is the same for all of the photos, but I have changed my position, so the motion blur that is introduced to the image is different in each image, even though all of the settings on my camera are the same. So it's something to keep in mind, where you stand matters when you're trying to introduce motion blur to your pictures. If you're trying to shoot something in motion and you want that image to be frozen without any blur and you shoot it with a shutter speed set to a 15th of a second, you're not going to get the image that you want. You can do test shots to see if what it is that you're trying to capture works with the shutter speed that you're using. So shooting a waterfall, for example, at 1 60th of a second is gonna give you that very whimsical look. If you don't want that and you want it to be frozen in time, you wanna see the droplets that are coming off of the waterfall, you wanna speed up your shutter speed. Something like 1 1,000th of a second is going to freeze the water in place and give you the detail that you're looking for. Those are the basics of shutter speed. I hope you learned something today, and if you did, you take what you've learned and you go and you create something beautiful. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. It does really help keep me motivated in making these for you. And if you're interested in any of the gear that I used in today's video, I'll make sure I link that in the description down below. That's it for today's video. I'm Tilly Scholl. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.